Now the next question is, how do I calculate the total allowed rise time? I have a transmitter, I have a fiber, I have a receiver. A transmitter has a certain uh, bandwidth, it, depending on whether I'm using an LED or a laser or whether I'm using direct modulation and external modulation. Receiver again, depending on the uh, you know response time of the receiver, uh, depending on the uh, time taken by the electron to move through the carrier and so on, you have a certain response time for the receiver. There could be trans impedance amplifier in the receiver which could also impose a bandwidth limitation. So there are certain uh, 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 there are certain constraints for the receiver. Now fiber does it include any does it uh, introduce any rise time constraint? Uh, would a fiber introduce a rise time constraint? And the answer is yes because of dispersion the different um, wavelengths will start walking off and so the pulse started getting will start getting uh, you know delayed and uh, round uh, shaped in the time domain. So all transmitter, receiver and the fiber contributes towards this rise time. And this TR that we are writing as 0.35 by B is actually the effective rise time of the transmitter, fiber and the receiver. So how do we calculate that? So what we do is uh, we say that the total system rise time is given as system rise time square is equal to the sum of squares of transmitter, fiber and receiver. Okay. Uh, it's like saying that I have three cascaded filter. How do I find the total bandwidth of the system? Uh, so this whole com thing comes from, I can think of this as H1 of F of the uh, corresponding transmitter, H2 of F uh, corresponding to the fiber and H3 of F corresponding to the uh, receiver, fiber and the receiver. And I can write the uh, low pass response for the uh, transmitter, fiber and receiver. So the cascaded response is nothing but uh, H1F times uh, H2F times uh, H3F. And if each one of them has an individual bandwidth delta F and a corresponding rise time, uh, tau, and, uh, tau transmitter, tau fiber and tau receiver, you can prove that tau system square is equal to uh, sum of squares of the individual rise times. Uh, so the question is, as I said, why does a fiber introduce rise time? Fiber introduced rise time because of dispersion and we know that the dispersion depending on the type of fiber you are using it could be intermodal dispersion or intramodal dispersion. In case of a single modal fiber we only take care of the intramodal dispersion which is again uh, uh, due to material dispersion and also due to waveguide dispersion and intermodal dispersion is the walk off between the different modes of a multimode fiber. So the depending on the type of fiber you are using, you have to consider the dispersion. Okay. So uh, life, uh, rise time of the transmitter is decided by, uh, we have done this in the transmitter when we learned about lasers and LEDs and transmitter. Similarly, we did for the receiver and for fiber. So we have enough information to um, calculate each of these. Okay. So uh, in uh, tau modal dispersion is of course, if N1 is the core index, N2 is a clad index. The, uh, the delay because of the intermodal dispersion is given by this relation where delta is the differential uh, n1 minus n2 by n2. Whereas uh, GVD, the group velocity dispersion because of intermodal and intramodal, sorry, because of material and waveguide dispersion can be put together represented by this number d which is represented in picosecond per kilometer nanometer, right. And you can calculate what is the spread because of GVD. So you have all the information. So let's now uh, do some examples. So we're going to deal with some case studies where uh, we are trying to uh, make sure that we understand how to do the uh, link budget. We are going to do some uh, three or four case studies. So this is a data given. The rise time of the transmitter and the receiver is uh, specified as uh, these numbers. 0.25 and 0.35 nanosecond. Dispersion is given. It's given that it's a single mode fiber, so you don't have to worry about the intermodal dispersion. The spectral width of the source is 3 nanometer. The link length is 50 kilometer. The desired bitrate is 1 Gbps. The question is, is that link feasible? Will this kind of link support 1 Gbps? This is one way of simple way of doing the link design. Uh, so the transmitters uh, square, so the, the rise time budget is what we are uh, trying to uh, illustrate here. 
So let's calculate the tau transmitted square. So this is uh, 0.25 square. Um, fiber square. So this is dispersion times length times delta uh, lambda. So this is uh, 2 picosecond per kilometer nanometer multiplied by 50 kilometer multiplied by 3 nanometer. So the answer is 2 picosecond into 50 into 3 the whole square. So that's 0.09 uh, nanosecond square. Um, now, so you see that uh, 0 0.06, 0 0.09, they're all almost of the same order of magnitude. The receiver uh, has a, a rise time given that it's 0.35 nanosecond. This could be dependent on the trans impedance amplifier or the response time of the receiver. And that's uh, square of that is 0.1225 nanosecond square, 0.35 square. Now the question is the desired bitrate is 1 Gbps. So the whether this system rise time, the square root of this is 0.524 nanosecond, whether this can support 1 Gbps. So um, the question we want to ask is if it is Rz or Nrz. So if it is an Rz uh, uh, signaling that we want to do, we know that this is 0.35. Uh, this is let's say this is okay, okay. So 0.35 divided by the bitrate, bitrate is the same as symbol rate for OK. So 0.35 by 1 Gbps, which is 0.35 uh, nanoseconds, which is 350 picoseconds. Uh, whereas if it's NRZ, you know it is 0.7 divided by 1 Gbps. So this is 700 picoseconds. So if I were to support RZ signaling, the rise time cannot be more than, it has to be less than 350 picoseconds. And our rise time is 520. This is actually 524 picoseconds. So clearly this cannot support RZ signaling. But it can support N NRZ signaling because 524 picosecond is obviously smaller than 700 picoseconds. So clearly uh, it can support uh, NRZ transmission. RZ is not possible. So this is how you decide the rise time budgeting. Now we will move on to some case studies for the link budget because uh, so just to kind of summarize from the bit rate or uh, you could you derive what your symbol rate is and from the symbol rate there are two branches you need to do one is the loss budget where you could uh, find what is the required BER from that Q uh, SNR and from that uh, sensitivity which is the power required in the receiver and from that the length of the fiber and from that the uh, transmit power and if you require it for the number of it first. Okay. The other track is once you have the length of the fiber, then you can do the rise time budget. You can say uh, once you have the length of the fiber, you can find out what is the tau fiber, then uh, tau transmitter, tau receiver. So you need to know what is the delta f of the transmitter, delta f of the receiver, from that you, sorry, from that you calculate what is the uh, transmitter rise time, receiver rise time and from the length of the fiber and the type of the fiber you know what is the type and both of these needs to be done to uh, complete a link budget. So we could do some of these link budget as uh, uh, tutorials. So the first uh, tutorial exercise is to uh, study a simple uh, point to point link, it's like a case study. Uh, this is an access network. Now, access network is typically a short distance network. Uh, we will discuss in detail about this access network when we do the section on networking. It's an STM1. It's a synchronous transport, uh, transport module. Uh, that's an expansion of STM. These are some standards given by ITU and IEEE. So, STM1 uh, structure consists of uh, this. Basically, STM1 defines the data rate. Right? It's 155 Mbps. Uh, it is said that we need to budget a splice every 2 kilometer. So 2 kilometer splice 
two kilometer splice and so on right that's what we need to budget splice loss is 0.3 db per splice okay uh, what is the longest possible link mm, it is given that the transmitter has so this is the link you don't know what is the longest you don't know what is the length of the link so you have uh, longest possible link is what you want to find but you know that every 2 kilometer has a 0.3 db loss and let's take uh, uh, the transmitter is given to be uh, 13 10 nanometer so the parameters are here output power of the transmitter is minus 15 dBm. its rise time tau transmitter is 1.3 nanoseconds spectral width is 5 nanometer Receiver sensitivity is uh, minus 32 dBm. So somebody has calculated that you need minus 32 dBm so that you get the desired bit error rate. So this is minus 32 dBm you require at the receiver. The rise time tau receiver is 1 nanoseconds. And the loss is 0.35 dB per uh, kilometer. Uh, this is slightly higher than 0.2 dB kilometer because we are considering a uh, 13 10 nanometer as the uh, transmitter wavelength. So the question is uh, we are asked to find what is the longest possible link. So we know that every 2 kilometer has a 0.3 dB loss. So the loss in 2 kilometer is uh, 0.7 dB actually the fiber loss 0.7 and then there is a 0.3 dB right. So the total loss is 0 0.7 uh, 0.35 into 2 kilometers plus 0.3 db so i can take it as uh, point uh, sorry 1 db in 2 kilometers which is you could think of it as 0.5 db in uh, every kilometer uh, how do you do the rise time budget we say system rise time is this so allowed system rise time is uh, points because we wanted to transport in RZ not return to zero. So this point rise allowed rise time should be less than 0.7 divided by 155 Mbps. This number comes out to be 4.5 nanoseconds. So the we know that the system rise time should is this. So which means that the fiber rise time, which decides the longest length of the fiber, should be less than or equal to system rise time minus transmitter uh, receiver minus transmitter. You substitute all the numbers you get that the fiber rise time should be less than 4.2 nanoseconds. Now a source is 13 10 nanometer there is no dispersion in uh, at 13 10 nanometer zero we know 13 10 nanometer is a zero dispersion wavelength right. So which means what is the fiber rise time the fiber rise time is zero which means this is a link which is not limited by the rise time. Because you can with this transmitter and receiver you can allow a fiber rise time of 4.2 nanosecond but this fiber is not posing any rise time. So the length of the fiber is not limited because of the rise time. Now so you can have uh, as long a fiber as you want. Uh, the length is limited only by the attenuation it is not uh, limited by the dispersion. Uh, to do a power budget, we know that the question says, uh, I mean, uh, this is probably in, should be included in the data. The connector loss at the transmitter and receiver is uh, 1 dB. Allowed receive power is minus 32 uh, dBm. Uh, that's what is given, the sensitivity. So the loss, uh, including the splice loss is 0.35 dB plus 0.15. So that's 0.5 dB per uh, every kilometer. So the allowed loss is minus 15 minus 1 dB minus 32 dBm. Uh, what is uh, this minus 32 dBm? So this is, uh, so you have transmitter, you have the fiber link, you have the receiver. You know minus 32 dBm is what is required at the receiver, right? Uh, you say that there is a connector loss of 1 dB each uh, or 0.5 dB each. So there is a 1 dB at the transmitter. Uh, P transmitted minus p received the best received power minus the additional loss is 16 db 
So you can afford to lose 16 dB in the link, which means that 0.5 dB per kilometer multiplied by the length, that's where you will lo lose the power in the fiber, that is 16 dB, which means the longest length is 16 divided by 0.5, which is 32 kilometer. So with this transmitter, with this receiver, at 1310 nanometer, the link is not limited by dispersion. The link length is limited only by the fiber loss. And that fiber loss is allowing 32 kilometer of link. Question is, what do you do if you want to extend this link? So either you receive and then reconvert, retransmit, or you could use an EDFA. The question is, can you use the EDFA? You cannot because this is a link at 1310 nanometer. So erbium loop fiber amplifier is not a solution because erbium emission is not in uh, 15, it, it is in 15-15 nanometer range, it's not in 13 10 nanometer range. So this kind of access network, this short distance link practically actually can work only up to this 32 kilometer. Mm -hmm.